What's up everybody, it's your boy Reggie Casual and welcome to the state where we discuss, disseminate and debate fashion, the clothes, the industry, the lifestyles and the cultures surrounding it. Today we're talking fashion brands and five reasons why you shouldn't start one. That's next, let's get it. All right, so the first thing is, is that it's just a low rate of success. Compared to other industries that enjoy a 50% or a higher rate of success after four years, fashion brands typically fail at a 53% rate. And that's just counting the ones that register, not to mention all the ones that never really say that they're a brand or start anything yet. And one of the biggest reasons is that many would-be fashion brands are started by individuals with a heavy interest in the creative process and not in the business process and often fail to understand how to reach the people they want to reach in a highly competitive field. And on top of competition and having less savvy business acumen, it's been exacerbated by the sheer amount of individuals that can start labels all while neglecting the business aspect entirely outside of promotion, because it's just that easy. But we'll get into that a little bit later. All right, so the next thing is logistics. Now, if you can't just sit down and go over the logistics of your potential label, your potential fashion brand, then what are you doing really? I mean, the creative process of making a label is actually the easiest part because it's what you actually want to do. But the logistics are often frustrating and more often than not, ignored. Like finding a sample maker, a manufacturer, building a customer profile, understanding your market, sales channels, shipping, line sheets, lookbooks, financial outlook, and building a potential client list that's all boring. It's terrible. It's boring because all those things are hard because it's the actual work. I say this all the time to brands I consult with. Closed mouths don't get fed, and a closed mind doesn't get experience. Understand, the other stuff that you learn will increase your odds substantially. So learn it. It's not foolproof, but it certainly helps to know all that stuff. Just a, a surface level will help you out tremendously. And this next one, people are gonna get mad. A t-shirt line is not a fashion brand. I know I'm gonna catch a lot of flack for this, but a lot of cats are confusing a t-shirt line with a fashion brand. These are two totally different things. And it's not your fault. It's not your fault if you believe that. Streetwear has had us all believe that starting with a good old t-shirt will be the best way to start your label. You know, get your funds up there and then maybe you can make whatever you want. And that used to be the case. Why? Because it's easy, it's relatively cheap. And if you succeed, you can make a bundle with little upfront costs compared to making an actual cut and sew piece. The fact of the matter is, it's not the late 90s or early 2000s anymore. People are more savvy and literally anyone can make a graphic t-shirt today. Like your grandmother can make a graphic t-shirt today, easy. In fact, the most promising labels you see are coming from artists, actual clothing designers, and those that take the time to create something new and or fresh, even in streetwear. Take Samuel Ross of A Cold Wall. Yeah, he came from the Virgil camp, but he paid his dues in the trenches of London as an artist before even approaching Virgil. Certainly needs his own WTH, but the point is, if you're not ready to design something for a far more fashion savvy audience, starting a brand may not be up your alley just yet. And that goes into the next thing. You're just not known for anything except trying to sell your brand. Now, this is optional, but I believe today this is so important. Back in the late 90s and early 2000s, if you started a brand, it was a crazy thing to accomplish. Think of all the people, Bobby Hundreds, Jeff Staple, James Jebbia, Sean Stussy, and to a lesser degree, Nigo and Hiroshi Fujiwara because they were known outside of fashion. But nonetheless, these guys became known for starting brands, streetwear brands, something at the time that seemed hard to do. And it was. Access to cool stuff and how to make it was hard to come by during that time. But in this age, starting a brand is as easy as going to Printful or any other person that helps you do the stuff easily and just printing on some stock tees. It's not special anymore. If you're gonna start a brand, you essentially have to be known for something else besides the product you wanna sell. Like 
Maybe you make cool artwork like Cause, or again, Samuel Ross, he made some pretty cool artwork. Maybe you come from a photography background and you got popular on Instagram. Maybe people will support you there. Maybe you started a YouTube channel that talks about fashion. I don't know, doesn't matter. The point is today people are so influenced by stories and the people sharing those stories in their own creative ways. If you start a brand that has no story attached to it, be that you being known for something or your work, then you're playing a zero sum game. Put your creative work to the test, not just your cool name that you made up. Anybody can make up a cool name and put it on a t-shirt. Nobody cares about that anymore. It's not, I mean, I have a cool name, Reggie Casual. That's pretty damn cool. I think it's cool. Maybe I'm wrong, but it's, I think it's pretty cool. And last, your idea of success. This is a little long, but it's most important. This is a given. No business does big business from the onset, at least not many. That so many people think that they're just gonna blow up out of nowhere in fashion. That's like the rarest thing ever. It just doesn't happen that way. You gotta take some lumps and go through the trenches, like Sam Ross. <laughs> and for all the analytical people out there that need proof of this, maybe anecdotal evidence at most, even seasoned designers that garner A-list clientele tend to be on very strict budgets. Take Lorraine Scott, who literally had to learn how to sew her own clothes because she was very tall growing up, who went from model to stylist to fashion designer, again, known for something else rather than just selling you something, was able to gain the attention of Nicole Kidman, Angelina Jolie, and even Michelle Obama, among many other A-list clientele. But before her untimely passing, her business was running at a loss of 3.5 million pounds, UK money. And she had the clientele. It ain't easy is the point. And she was considered a success story. So you gotta be honest with yourself. Do you really wanna make clothes or do you wanna be like the people who you see making money from clothes? You know, I've met countless individuals vying to become the next Virgil, the next Kanye, or even Kim Jones not themselves. Sure, their influence and inspiration is an awesome thing, but if you're looking to measure up to those behemoths right now, instead of focusing on the work, then you'll never get to where you want to be. To put it bluntly, if you're looking for validation from everyone, you're setting yourself up for failure. If you ask any marketer, anyone that learned about marketing in school, at work, or just at a professional level, they will tell you when you target everyone, you target no one. You simply have no clue who to talk to because you want everyone to like your stuff. And that is not fashion at all. Fashion is all about niche, different strokes for different folks. You don't have to have everybody like your stuff because you don't need everyone, you need true fans. Don't let the bright lights fool you though, unless you do let them fool you. And if so, this fashion thing just isn't for you. Now, I know we all wanna make money, especially from our passions, with better opportunities, better access, et cetera, et cetera. But if you're making a brand, shoot for the fences and be prepared to work incredibly hard, like Jesus hard, like Jesus hard, like Jesus hard, that hard. And that's it for this week on the state business. <laughs> But question as we do, what are your issues about new brands or individuals that make new brands or are you making a new brand and what have been your pitfalls or successes? Any tips, let those be known in the comments. Give a thumbs up if you like this video and follow your boy and the casual official at ReggieCasual and thecasual.co on Instagram. So stay, mother you think that not subscribe to the you need. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. But most importantly, keep it locked right here for all of your info on international street fashion and culture from Tokyo. It's your boy and keep it casual. Yoroshiko nagashimasu. I'll see you guys in a minute.